So all we need to do now really is to go and install Myth TV. And as I say, what I was doing is I was building it and getting it to tell me what it needed. Um, and that made it a lot easier rather than trying to fathom out what a lot of these were. These packages, as I said before, they are more appropriate perhaps to Debian or Ubuntu or maybe even, I don't know, Fedora, maybe, I don't know. So we can get the program from Git, um, but there's a far easier way without having to bother to install Git. If you just copy this location here, paste it into the browser, it will take you to the Git page. And then if you go to, uh, is it here? Tags, yeah. So click on Master Tags. So the current latest version is 33.1. Click on that. And somewhere um, it will let you download. Is it here? No. Go to file. No. Uh, somewhere you can download this particular version. I'm not sure where. Forgive me, I don't know this too well, but there is somewhere we can download them. I thought it was from here actually. Let's just make this bigger in case there's something hiding. Our oh, code is it that one there? Download zip. Right, I'm going to copy this link and yeah, that was hidden, that was. And I'm going to try and modify that. Paste that in and just change that to tar.gz. Yep, it's found it, so that's probably the best way to do it, unless you know GitHub better than I do and you know exactly how to get to that file. So I'll just wait for that to download. Actually, I'm sure it should be. Oh yes, this is it, yes. You click on the tag, that's because the browser's so narrow. Uh, yeah, you should be able to get to it from there. There it is there, tar.gz. So, that's probably the easier way. Okay, so there's the file downloaded. I'll be extracting this quite a few times just to show how to get to things. Uh, if we go back to the Myth TV page, let's change into that. And as it says, you can type in configure help to get lots of help. Uh, sorry, you've got to go into the, there's two directories that ex get extracted. And the first one you want to go into is Myth TV. Uh, when that's built, we go into Myth Plugins and install the plugins. Um, you can run Myth, Myth TV quite successfully without installing any plugins. I, am, I only use one of them, which is Myth Archive, and that's to export uh, recordings off of Myth, Myth TV. It's just a convenient way of um, exporting them. I, 
I think I'm not sure if it's part of the there's a bit where you can play optical discs and I think with the Myth Archive plugin you can also write a uh, media that you've recorded to DVD as well I think that's right, I'm right in saying that I've, I don't think I've ever used it um, but down here it says what plugins are available here I won't mention some of them um, but we'll come to that I'll show you how to install Myth Archive plugin um, basically it says for any distribution other than these two here just to run configure um, what I did was to run um, configure so we've got to go into this Myth TV directory uh, yeah directory first so let's do that there's configure with help there's lots in there um, You can do things like enable these extra options. You see it won't have found them. Um, they're used by FFmpeg and streaming transcoders. So if you want to do use them, you'll want to turn them on explicitly because I don't think it finds them by default, as I remember. Um, there's a few other options here, but what we'll have to do is just inspect the output when we've done the configure and see what it's found and what we might want to uh, adjust. So I'm going to use the prefix command to tell it to install it into Myth TV. And that's to allow me to update Myth TV in the future if I want to. And all I've got to do is create a sim link and point that to the new version which you know, Simlink's called Myth TV, and point that to a version directory. And that's basically really all you need to start out with. And you can see straight away the first thing it's complaining about, it wants QMake, which is part of QT. And QT is a huge package, and also the dependency list for QT is huge as well. So what you'll find is that we'll be installing most of the dependencies for QT and most of those dependencies are for Myth TV anyway. It, it requires them. So, um, without having to scratch around too much, I've obviously got a running order for installing Myth T, uh, QT. Um, so, I'll see if I can emulate that here. QT there. Um, I'll shut this down, we don't need that anymore. And you can see there's a few downloads here, patch. And just some details there. So required XORG libraries, and then we've got all these dependencies we need. So ALSA lib, um, cups, do we need cups? I wouldn't have thought so, but you'd be surprised sometimes. No, I didn't think so. Um, double conversion. Now, bearing in mind the versions are different, so there may be some things here that I haven't got that we might need. That is actually a recommendation, so let's have a look at that. Uh, we've got CMake, so as I said before, CMake is needed for other tools. Um, so we will be using that again. So I'm going to delete Myth TV again just to tidy it up. As I said, I will be extracting it several times. Right, yeah, we haven't installed that. And it does look like we need to install that now. It didn't exist before. Uh, Glib we've got. Yep. Um, LS Glib. 2745, there it is there. Uh, GST plugins base we'll need. Yep, that's the last, actually, ironically, it's the last package we install. Let's put that, yeah, there. 
Um, half buzz we've got, ICU we've got, Jasper. Yep, we need that. LibJPEG Turbo, I think we need, yep. LibMNG. Yep. LibPNG we've got, let's just double check that. Yep. LibTIFF, LibWebP, LibXKB Common we've already installed. Let's again double check that. Uh, right, okay, that'll be in one of those subdirectories. There it is there. Mesa we've installed, MT Dev we've installed. Yep. PCRE tool we've got. Yep. SQLite, I think it's one of the first packages we installed. Wayland we've got. And as it says, Mesa must be built with the Wayland backend. XCB, Util image, I think we've got. Yep. Util. K Sims, K Sims, sorry, XCB Util, Render Util, and XCB Util WM. So we've got all the recommended um, optional. Uh, Right, iBus, I don't think we need that. No, lib input we've already installed, we needed that anyway for X Windows. Yep. Now, MariaDB, or MariaDB, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, it's essential for Myth TV because it uses that to store, or the Myth backend uses that to store all information about the uh, recordings and s schedules and so on. Um, and you'd think, well, why does it need such a big database? The database is quite complex when you look at it. Um, one of the tables even stores frames within each recording, so um, they can get quite big. In fact, I was looking at mine this morning, and uh, I think it is the table that stores the... It's the Seek Index, that's what it is. That, that table's half a gigabyte in size now, in the one I'm using, and the index is almost the same size as well. So you can see that, um, you know, you do need quite a, a decent database, uh, which is probably why they're using MariaDB. Um, PCI Utils, again, that's optional. Maybe we should install this. Um, it's been mentioned a couple of times. Maybe we should have installed it earlier, so we'll do that straight away, I think, because... It's fairly simple. Uh, PostgreSQL, we don't need that. Pulse Audio, yep, we'll install that. Um, Myth TV will use that. SDL2, I'm pretty sure we need. And we don't need Unix ODBC. So I'm going to start with getting. PCI Utils installed. Where did that go to? There it is there. And you can see it needs curl wget or links. Well, we've got the first two anyway. So it should work as it is. So this is something maybe we should have done previously. And might even be optional anyway, but it's certainly a handy util to have around. And it certainly doesn't take long to build. So let's build it with that. Oh, sorry, that, that was building it. Pick a pardon. Now let's install it. Okay, and change mode of that file. 
configuration. There's a cron job here for it to update weekly. And we can run that now, actually. That's done. And we should be able to, let's tidy it up first. Should be able to run LSPCI. And you can see there is the controller card there, the tuner card. And there's the details about it. Um, in fact, let's run it with the kernel. You'll see there's no kernel information. Run it with sudo. And you can see there's no kernel module loaded for it. Right, so that's PCI Utils. That was the easiest of the lot. So what I'm going to do is to try and go down these um, and install dependencies um, in some sort of order. Let's just take a look at this double conversion. Right, I might install this first actually because it hasn't got any dependencies itself. So let me just make a note of this. Double conversion dash 3.2.1. Not sure what this does. But it's there in the recommended. Binary to decimal and decimal to binary routines for IE doubles. Okay. Uh, take it that means double precision numbers. So let's extract it. Make a temporary build directory. And we just look like we can just copy this cmake command and run make to build it. Okay, make test to run some tests. All passed. So now we can do um, make install and that's complete nice and simple. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Alsa Lib. Um, this hasn't got any dependencies that we need so that's okay uh, again should really check the kernel here there's going to be a few of these um, there's already been a few as it is. I think there's a few more. Okay, so device drivers again. And sound card is a couple of pages down. That's what he said, obviously. Advanced Linux sound architecture. And then you need to select the drivers appropriate for your hardware. So, obviously, whatever you've got, you need to select. And it looks like I've got, yeah, you have to select, I think, PCI audio to get the HD audio come up. And you can see I've got the real tech for the Intel installed. So, that's all there. So it looks like just a configure and make. Yeah, there's no explanation. OK, 
okay, that's all done. We're not running any or making any documentation, so we'll just run this command to run some tests. And install the package. And that's it. We're not doing the documentation as I said, so we can ignore the rest. That's also a little bit out of the way. Now there's quite a few packages to install before QT. There's probably 30, maybe 40, um, all because of various dependencies. Um, now the next one, uh, I wonder if we can find the dependency of this. It's probably Pulse Audio by the looks of it. The top level one. Let's see if we can track it all down. So lib sound file. How's the lib we've got? We've got dbus, we've got eloggd, we've got glib, speaks. We haven't got Excel libraries, we have. FFTW, although it's optional, it is actually a requirement for Myth TV, so we need to install that. Um, lib sample rate is also a requirement for lib t uh, Myth TV. Um, I think that's it, so. If we go to the first one I've got is FFTW. Now normally I'd go to lib sample rate, but you can see it needs lib sound file and FFTW so for the tests. So I'm going to install FFTW next. So let's fetch that. Extract it. Okay, we build FFTW three times for different libraries in different numerical precisions. The default double precision, floating point, the older 32-bit single precision version named float, which sacrifices precision for speed, and the long double, which offers increased precision at the, lower, at the cost of slower execution. So the first build is for double precision of arithmetic. Let's just see if there's any command explanations. Uh, let's copy the first one. We can compare it a bit easier then. So enable shared and static. Or disable static. Enable threads. Enable SSC2, AVX and AVX2. And these are for the specific... Um, options I believe and there's one there for AVX 512 and it says these op optimized routines using the AVX 512F instructions FFTW will check if these routines can really be used on the current CPU when the library is loaded so an FFT build with these routines enable can run on the CPU without AVX 512 so that's something to bear in mind if you're building on a system where it's finally going to be used on a system that can can use these functions uh, you can enable it safely on the a machine that hasn't got the functions it does say however that the option is not compatible with the enable long double which is the last build it will do so we'll just take the defaults Uh, configuration and build the package first of three times and as a reminder this is a package that's required by Myth TV uh, despite the fact that it's optional for QT5 was it QT5? Sorry, for Pulse Audio, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, Pulse Audio.
Okay, that's built. We can run make check to run some tests. As it says there, if you're running this on a 32-bit machine, it takes a lot longer than it would do on a 64-bit machine. Okay, so that's tested and it says at the top there, the transform have passed, transform have passed, basic test, so that's okay. Let's now install. And we'll run the same build again, but this time for single precision.
Okay, that's now completed, so we'll install. And finally, we'll build the long double precision. Okay, so that's completed. Let's now do the install part again. And that's the FFTW package done with. So I'm going to delete that now. Uh, let's tidy up. W, get rid of that page, and the next sequence we're going to go through is probably lip sample rape looks at, yeah, this one. So we've done FFTW, it's only for tests anyway, lip sound file we've got here. Yeah, this is it, we need Flack, Opus, Lib Vorbis, um, Alsa Lib, we've already done Lame, is optional but it's required by Myth TV. Uh, MPEG 1, 2, 3, I don't think that's needed. No, that's not needed. Speaks. I think that's uh, a dependency, recommended dependency of something else. So the next thing we'll look at is lame. So that needs lib sound file. Oh yes, we need to reinstall this. That's right, it's a circular dependency. And NASM. NASM hasn't got any uh, dependencies that we need apart from documentation which we're not interested in um, Opus hasn't got any dependencies and Lib Vorbis has got Lib Og ok so I've now got the right packages up in the sequence that I've got when I built this previously so it's Lib Forbis, uh, sorry, libog next. That hasn't got any dependencies. So let's fetch this. And this is just straightforward package, so I'll just copy and paste all of that. And make check that's all passed and install it and that's done. Okay, so now libvorbis. Libvorbis is actually a requirement for Myth TV as well. Enable the docs so we can just copy and paste the instructions as they are. Run some tests. And as 
close the route, install the package, and that's done. So that's another package that Myth TV requires out of the way. The next one I've got is Opus. Again, just copy and paste this. Not much to do with this at all. And we can run some tests. Okay, all passed. So let's now install. And let's hope it's done with. So that leads us on to NASM next, which is a requirement for Myth TV. So we've got The package here. The other links for documentation I'm not bothering with. So I'll just extract NASM. If you download the optional documentation, put it in the source tree. We're not doing that. So we'll just copy and paste this. See how long this takes? Not long at all. And that's that done. We can install the package now. And that's done. We don't need to worry about the last commands because it's all about installing documentation. So again, that was another requirement for Myth TV. The next package, FLAC, is also a requirement for Myth TV. We've got the dependencies installed. So let's download the package. Extract it. And it says the test results make check if you pass the enable exhaustive and enable valve in testing parameters to configure and then run the test. It will take a, very, take a very long time. So I don't think I'll bother doing that. The basic test will be fine. So let's build it now. I'm 
it's like there's several levels of testing now because it's disabled thorough test. So I've just left it as the default. We're not doing exhaustive, exhaustive. We're not doing the minimal. So this may still take some time. This is only 0.6 to run the test suite. I presume that's by default. Hopefully it is. Uh, let's time this and come back when it's done. Okay, we've got a problem here for some reason. Looks like there's some foreign characters here, so whether that's the problem. Uh, must have not seen this before. investigate this a little bit sure why that's failed. Let's try it again. So it looks like it's encoding and decoding it's failing at when the file name's got a foreign character on it. That's a bit unfortunate. Let's try that. Okay, um, let's try setting that locale, see if that helps. Uh, should be shouldn't be an issue in real life because you can figure Myth TV to use your own encoding, and you're not going to be getting files from anywhere else. All the files that appear on the machine will be generated from recordings and log files and so on. So uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, what I think I might do is just. reinstall, yeah, rebuild this and do minimal testing 
as I say, that that problem, if it is a genuine problem with like the code page is wrong or something, or locales wrong or something, it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, disable thorough tests. Sorry, I didn't see that originally. It is actually there, so it's doing the middle minimum number of tests. Uh, okay, let's do. Let's be really serious about this and do lang equals. In fact, let's do yeah lang equals uh, let's use the UTF eight one for America. So lang equals that and then copy this in. There's nothing there about what type of language or locale is being used. Okay, let's now bring back the tests. I'll put in US, was it, I think. In US, yes it is. UTF-8, make checks, see how that goes on. No, it's still failing. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Well, I thought this might happen, that there'll be some problems because of different versions. Um, I'm actually tempted to install the previous version that I used, see if that would work, which was 134. Can't see anything obvious there that I recognise, so let me try that. Uh, so it'll be BLFS 11.2. And I don't want the system D version. Yeah, flat 134, yeah, that's the version I use. So let's try this, see how this goes. I 
course, if this fails as well, then it indicates there's something else that's wrong or needs to be set up. Uh, there's a point a card or a lang. Yeah, there it is there. Uh, yeah, five nine one, so that is correct. Okay. So make right, so let's see what happens. Make check. Let's time this. Okay, so it looks like those file names with the peculiar characters in it that have caused the problem. Um, I'm quite not sh not quite sure how that gets resolved. So if you want to install FLAC with a reliable test, then I'd suggest you install this earlier version. Or maybe there might be a version in between the two where it works. You know, a later version than the current version I'm installing or building. But before, um, and I guess it could be before one version one dot four. So maybe any later version of one dot three will work as well. So yeah, I'm going to install this version, being as it's passed the test. So I don't want to take any risks with uh, breakage. Although, like I say, I wouldn't have thought that would cause a problem. Um, but I suppose there is a chance that it may do. So install and tidy that up. So where did that other flak go? Get rid of that. So that is a requirement for Miss TV. So the next one is speaks. So there's two files to download here. Package consists of two separate tables and needs to be extracted and built independently. So let's extract the first one, which is speaks DSP. Double check that. No, it's not, it's just the speaks one. And no extra commands, so let's just copy and paste this. Okay, and install it. Now extract and install the speed speaks DSP package, which we can do with all of these commands. And then again, install, and that's done. Oh, hang on, didn't that? Oh, I see. It They did uh, put us back to the earlier directory, so I need to delete the other package as well. That's right. So that speaks done. 
and now we can install lame for the first time because lame and libsound file have got a dependency problem uh lame sorry lame So I'm still alone with those parameters there. So we'll take it. No NASM enabled use of NASM to compile optimize assembly. Right, so we've uh, installed NASM. So we'll add that switch. Oh, okay, it has no effect on X8, X8664. So it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, Bings is 64 bit CPU. So let's build, make test, and that looks like it's all okay. And we install with this command. So that's lame complete for the first time. Now we can build libsound file, which is that one there. So tidy up lame, fetch libsound files package. Just copy and paste these commands. Do some tests. Okay, that's done and we can install now. So that's libsound file. Can shut that down and go back to lame and install it for the second time. Test that's okay, and we'll do that strange install again, and that's done. That's lame complete. So now we can go into lib sample rate, which is another uh, requirement of Myth TV. In 
In fact, these are all optional. Um, don't not used to seeing the optional so high up. So it could be some of these packages don't actually need to install if they're optional, possibly. Right, so again, it's just a copy and paste on this one. And make a check. Okay, all tests are passed. So let's install and let's lib sample right done. Right, next I've got lib. Uh, let's shut that one down. Okay, is that not a requirement anymore? The next one I've got is lib cap 265 and I can't see lib cap there at all as a dependency of pulse audio and yet I've got it as a dependency Okay, unless it's for something else, but it, if that's the case, it's in the wrong place, really. So I'll just mark that as not required and move on to Pulse Audio, which is a definite requirement for Myth TV. So we should have all these installed now. So we can extract. And build. Let's just check these. Yeah, that's okay. So now let's run Ninja. Okay, that's done. Let's run Ninja test. It says one f test fails if the test not run as the root user. So let's do that. Okay. 
Oh, we've still got no could be not true root user. It didn't say which one. But it says it can be ignored. So let's try and become the real root. And rerun the tests. Yep, looks like this works. So it's a case where the effective ideas made a, a difference. Okay, so now let's do uh, ninja install. Uh, running pulse order system wide daemon is not is possible, not recommended. See this link for information. While still as root user, remove the debug configuration file for the system wide daemon to avoid creating unnecessary system users and groups. So that's done. There's a load more information there. Don't need to do anything else. So let's tidy up. And carry on. Okay, the next thing to install is SDL2. Um, I think basically what we need to install for this is ALSA. Um, it's optional, but it can be useful to have ALSA, some of the tools that come with it, uh, if you're having problems with uh, setting up the sound and so on, proving that your sound card does actually work. <coughs> So let's go to Alsa. Um, Alsa Lib, I think that's the one we've already got installed. Yeah, so we can skip that. Go on to Alsa plugins. Uh, this will need to be rebuilt after FFmpeg in my notes, it said. Yeah, it's optional, but I think FFmpeg's required something else. I thought it was Myth32, but I um, haven't got any notes here to that effect. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it is. So it must be something else that needs it then. Uh, how's the plugins? So straightforward. Configure and make. Make install. So a lot of these you might be thinking, well, a lot of them are optional, but uh, some of these do actually come out as being Miss TV requirements. So that yes, there probably are some that are optional, but then there probably are some that are not so optional. Um, in that they're indirect dependencies of Myth TV or they're just there and are good to have. So it's Alsa Plugins. Next we go to Alsa Utils.
So, um, I did build this with Disable Bat removed, which builds this basic audio tester, which we can do because we've got FFTW installed. House of Tools next. Installation. When installing multiple packages in a script, the installation needs to be done as the root user. Okay, so yeah, for this, I delete a lot of these because they're not necessary, or or maybe they won't build. So what the ones I've removed are Echo Mixer, NV24 Control. RM EDI GI control HDA HDA jack sense test HDA jack retask HDSP conf and HDSP uh, mixer. So I've removed those. Now I think, as I remember, I should be able to carry on as before. So I'll need to do this because I think I've lost that. Bashy, remove a tool that needs QT two or three and two unneeded files. Install the ALSA tools while running the following. So this goes through the remaining tool directories that haven't been deleted and builds them. and exit and that's that one uh, sorry. so we get else of firmware OSS, it's not needed. Uh, the next one I've got is Libex KB Common, but I think that's already been done. Yeah, I think this was the one that was in the yeah, subdirectory. 
so that's not needed. So now we can install SDL2. Is there any explanations? Yes, there's a few. Let's have a look at that. Okay, I don't think I need to bother with any of those, so I'll just accept the default. Build it. Right, right, so that's built. Um, it says to run the test, do not delete the static libraries below until after the tests are built. So we'll just do the install at the moment. And then we run the tests with this command, these commands. Let's see how long this takes. Didn't say the testing. So just got to remember to remove the static libraries after these tests are finished. Oh, each of the test programs are listed in the readme direct file this directory will need to be run individually. Many of them will need to be manually killed. Additionally, speakers need to be on with the volume at a suitable level. Right, I'm not going to bother with that. Well, oh, it's too late now, it's done. Uh, all right, let's have a quick go at some of them. So let's try test GL2. Right, and that presumably needs a screen, a GUI. Um, 
try test thread. Okay, it looks like that's worked. Um, don't really want to do all of them, but let's try test atomic. Okay, so looks like from the few that I've tried, there seems to be good stuff there. So let's remove the static files uh, as the super user and that's STL completed so the next we've got is probably Maria DB looks of it Uh, oh, why didn't I load that up? I thought I'd brought that one out. I haven't for some reason. So this needs lib event. Optional is boost. In fact, most of these. Um, yeah, in fact, I don't think there's anything else here. Um, I think the thing I need to do next, we're going to go for FFmpeg. Uh, it's a useful tool to have anyway with um, a tool like this. TV because it deals with um, audio and video files. You may want to transcode them, which Miss TV can do. Um, I'm not sure if it needs FFmpeg to do it or if it could do it itself, but uh, it's certainly useful to have. So we need libas FDK AAC free type we've got. Lame we've got, Libsiora we've got, I think. Let's just check Lame. All right, it's not Libsiora, it's Libforbis we've got, isn't it, and Libog. Let's get that one. Libvpx. Libopus. Oh, no, Opus, sorry, we've got that one, haven't we? Yep. So X264265, I know we haven't. And then NASM or YASM. Uh, for desktop use, we've got, we've got all these, except for LibVD Power, because that's unnecessary. So I think we can move on with X265. So we've got CMake, recommended NASM, so that's fine. Uh, so it looks like we can just copy and paste this.
Okay, that's built successfully. There's no test suite. So, we'll become root and install it. Move a static file. So that's actually a requirement for some external plugins for Myth TV, not a Myth TV plugin, but um, I think the plugins for transcoding. So now we'll do X264. Let's fetch it first. So the configure and make can be run as they are because we've got NASM installed. The disable CLI option sounds like a sensible option to have. And that's built, so let's now do an install. And that's done. Again, that's a requirement for the external plugins for Miss TV.